Hi, and welcome back to the Struggle Sec or Struggle Security YouTube channel, where the goal of this channel is to normalize struggling in cybersecurity. We wanna break down difficult concepts and pretty much give you a lot of insights and tips and tricks from a security practitioner. So today, I wanna to present you all with a question. Have you ever wondered if there's anybody inside of your home network that might be spying on you, that might be doing funny and malicious things to your devices? Is there some type of surveillance happening on your network? Well, I think that if you have any of those questions or have ever had any of those questions, you have come to the right place because today I'm gonna to show you some hands-on tutorials and some hands-on tips and tricks about finding evil within your network. Now, this isn't a deep dive into the subject, but very much so on more of a beginner level in trying to find to see if people are in your network or doing funny stuff on your devices. So let's go ahead and transition. I'm going to go over to my Kali box, my Kali Linux box, and kind of give you some examples of things that you can do in order to find out if bad or evil or somebody's hacking your network. So as you see here, I have Kali Linux up and running. And if I'm trying to do this activity, the first thing that I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna try to find out what my own information is. So the first command I'm gonna run is a ifconfig, uh, config. And that's gonna tell me very basic information about my own network and my own environment. And what this is pretty, the, the, the information I wanna take away here, come over a little bit, is my specific IP address. So that specific IP address is telling me the, the internet protocol address that I'm being given by my network, but it's also telling me some other information such as the subnet mask. Now, some very basic networking information, you can get this from studying for like the CCNA, um, Cisco Certified Network Associate Certification, or even the Network Plus Certification. So I'm not gonna go too deep in into that, but this is pretty much the information that I'm looking to take away here. So I'm looking at my own IP address and I'm looking at the subnet mask and that's telling me what network I'm actually on or sub network that I'm actually on. So now I'm going to do something different here. Let me clear out my terminal because now that I know what my subnet is, oh, the command is already there because I've done it before. I'm gonna, that pretty much translates into a sub network that is 192.168.0.0 slash 24. But you see something else on the end of it, right? You see this PR, and this is a flag in a tool called NMAP, Network Mapper, which pretty much is saying, hey, we're going to search the network for the ARP or ARP or Address Resolution Protocol devices. And that kind of talks to devices on like a device level, right? Or more of like a lower level when you're talking about like the OSI model level two. Again, don't want to deep dive, but just want to say that I am searching for devices by using that flag, by using the ARP protocol. And I want to do something also because I want to, I want you to see it visually when I run this command. And to do that, I'm going to use another tool here called Wireshark. And that's something that I do very often. A lot of times I'll run a command, I'll run something, and then at the same time, I'll run Wireshark to see what activity is actually happening. Is this a loud type of type of scanning? Is this a loud type of thing? Can I be detected? Am I being silent? A lot of times Wireshark can pick up a lot of things on the network that we wouldn't think would, would be there. So I'm going to choose the ETH0 or um, interface zero here, because this is where I am capturing right before I run, run my command. And right now it doesn't look like anything is happening, but as soon as I fire this thing off, we're gonna see this thing is gonna light up, right? So it's lighting up, the command is running, and as you see the protocol here is arc, 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 arc. And it's looking to make connections to devices on the network. And this is that searching process. NMAP is searching around my network by using the address resolution protocol, and it's saying, and it's looking for different things that are there, and it's gonna show me once the scan is complete. Now, I'm not a very impatient person, but sometimes I'll just press enter here with an MMAP because it tells, tells me about what the progress is. And boom, right? It just finished the scan. So I'm seeing several things here, right? So 
when you're seeing what devices are actually there, you're looking for things like the IP addresses. And these are some of those, those host names that are here, a Puma 7, Adam, right? The HP CF, this is actually my home printer, right? And it's an HP branded printer. And you can see some of the protocols that are running here. Specifically for a printer, you can see that there's a 515 is a printer protocol or HTTPS is a web type of hypertext transfer protocol, which is typically what um, um, websites present themselves as. Here, let me minimize Wireshark here so you can see this more. So I'm keep, I keep going down. Oh, I see something else here, right? A Raspberry Pi. I actually have my Raspberry Pi device plugged up on my home network. And this is, and, and this Hitron is like the brand of the router, the home router that I have. And it has, actually has a port that's open here on my Raz, Raspberry Pi, the SSH. But there's, so in getting into this whole thing about searching for what bad, searching for what good is, as you see, I've been going through this list and I've pointed out things that I know exactly what they are. But there can be times in which you can see things that you don't recognize. See IP addresses or names of particular devices that are on your network. Oh, looks like there's an iPhone here, all right? But the one that I wanna zoom in on that I know is something that I wanna investigate more is this device, all right? I'm seeing that it has a lot of ports open, but at the same time, I don't really know what it is. I mean, I know what it is, but I just wanna kinda of present some level of suspense for you. So this is the device that we're gonna go ahead and interrogate even further. So let's start with some of these ports, right? So I'm seeing that there's a port 22 open that is associated with the secure shell or SSH protocol. So here, I wanna go ahead, I'm just gonna open up another tab in my terminal, go ahead and interrogate this a little bit. So the one that I'm focusing on is this 192.168.0.80 device. So I see that SSH is open. And one thing that I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna, oops, let me make that look better here. I'm gonna interrogate this device's SSH protocol or the service that it's running, SSH service. Okay, when I press enter here, it says that it's unable to negotiate with that device. Okay, it doesn't have a matching key. Okay, I have another way that I can interrogate this because one thing that I'm doing is that I want to get more into seeing what the services are running or maybe the version of the services that are running on this port for this device. So I can also use another tool called Netcat, right? So NC. And one thing that I'm doing here is that I'm running an NCAT tool. It's a command line tool within Kali Linux and many Linux operating systems. This is the device. This is the host here. This is the port, the one that we saw back here, right? Port 22. Uh, what else? And then this V is for very verbose. So that's telling me that the Netcat to present all of the information or more information that's needed for this, that's gonna be presented to the command line. So I'm gonna press enter here and I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Again, it looks like it failed. Well, it says that it's open. It failed to connect, but it's actually telling me the version of SSH that's running here. For So for somebody who might be a penetration tester or an ethical hacker, they might wanna go deeper into this protocol to see if there's some vulnerabilities associated with it so they can take over that device or show some level of vulnerabilities in it. But we're gonna keep going forward with some of this interrogation of this foreign device here. The next one that we see here is that it's HTTP. Okay, like I mentioned before, HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol and it's over port 80. And one thing about that, anytime you see TCP port 80, you know that you can go straight to a, a, a web browser, open it and place that device or that host right there within the web browser, right? So one thing that, that we see here that is actually something here, right? It says we are seeing some type of terminal uh, for remote system administration login, seeing the username and password that we're able to put in there. So here we see that we that there's a device that's there that I said I didn't recognize. And then we went through the process of interrogating it by doing some scanning, looking over Wireshark, and really understanding if this is something bad. In this case, I know it's not something bad. I put it on my network, but I wanted to go through that exercise because 
when it's when you're talking about gaining some levels of skill within cybersecurity, this is something that you can do from home. The first thing that you should probably do if you're looking at gaining some technical skill is looking at applying a lot of your security practices on your own home infrastructure. Look, at, look for bad things on your own home network. Look to see if you can find the iPhones and the Raspberry Pis or the different servers that are in your, in your environment and pretty much gain a better understanding of what's there because that's very applicable. Those skills are very applicable to things that you would do within cybersecurity within a technical role. And even one more thing I just, I just wanna show you, oops, it's still capturing here. Okay, so Wireshark just, just, just keeps running and running and capturing. And another way to be able to understand what devices are there on your networks, Wireshark has a great little feature called the endpoints or under st statistics is what I went to and then the M the endpoints. And what it's doing here is that it's showing all the different devices that it captured while it was doing its scanning or while it was doing its um, inventory. So here I'm seeing there's even more devices on my network, right? Or more devices that have had communication with my network. These are some, uh, some public IP addresses, which are more applicable to the internet, what's out there on the internet, but I'm seeing all these 192. So these are all also on my network here. Hopefully this has been something valuable for you. Hopefully this has been something good, kind of showing you some step-by-steps, but not something that's super overwhelming to you. Hopefully, the scanning using nmap, using the if config command there within Kali, also going over some of the features within Wireshark and kind of some interrogating of the different devices that you might not find that are normal in your environment. I would like you and challenge you to go ahead and do some of these different things on your own home network. Try to find out if there's some bad things there or if there's some evil lurking around or something that's talking to the internet that you don't know that's that's there. Hopefully this has been valuable to you. Welcome back. Thank you for coming to Struggle Sec and come back for the next video where actually before you even go, I want you to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for this video so that you can get more and more of this content because I'll be breaking down these things just little bit by bit. And also if you have any other questions, feel free to put them down in the comment. Any other comments, questions, concerns, or additional information that you might want me to do a video on. So again, thank you for coming. Hopefully this has been valuable to you and we're normalizing struggling together, normalizing struggling and cybersecurity together. Thanks for watching.